Let's talk a little bit about Webpack. Um, so it's like, it seems like for a little while, uh, at least in the realm of like Twitter and Blue Sky or whatever that I'm on, like a lot of companies and a lot of people have been talking a lot about Veet and its sort of shape in the ecosystem. And I, I know that there are still a ton of companies using Webpack. Uh, and I know some folks and in, in places that I used to work, they're still using Webpack, but like you definitely don't hear as much about it these days. And I'm curious, like, how do you think like RSpec is like changing that? Uh, what are you sort of doing fresh and new? And like, how does it sort of, how do you see it fitting in the, the current ecosystem? So I guess, um, I don't know. I, I, I personally view them as like two different categories of tool, uh, to be honest, like, and nothing against V just in its current form. I know that it can do the job for many developers, but, uh, like, I don't know, I guess like, well, why doesn't Next.js just use V then? Like, why does Turbo Pack exist? Like not the, I'm not trying to throw shade here and maybe like I just got off a very long flight. So, but you know, if it's the be all and end all, then we should, then nobody would be building turbo pack next would be using it and blah, 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 but it's not. And that's nothing like, I mean, nobody uses CRA to build out these crazy type of things and there's various use cases for them. I think V really, why V got so momentously popular, you know, just speculating here is configuring build sucks. And nobody cobbled a solution to that together. You had Webpack, which was, okay, it's all in one. But then you also have, like, you know, a PhD degree in configuring Webpack to go along with it. So over time, and then, and then you know, something like ES Build pops up. And it's like, oh, cool. Here's, like, you know, an API with four hooks. And that sounds fantastic. Because if what you want, you know, when I think of ES Build, I always kind of in my head kind of put it as, oh, I need fancy Babel. Like I need something that mostly just transforms things and kind of puts it in certain places. And that's about it. Like a little bit more than SWC, but you know, fancy Babel. Transpile things, pack it into simple files and off you go. Um, so, so I don't know, I kind of see like uh, what Veet had done and we had learned from this as well when we saw what they had done, but they got super successful because if you weren't using Webpack, then it was like either Rollup or ES Build or some kind of Frankenstein between the two or whatever. And so what Vite did was say, okay, well, and they introduced this thing of like a build tool. I don't think we had that really. Like, I don't know. I really only use Webpack so I didn't go hunting around. But we didn't really have something like a, a Vite type experience that was just off the shelf to use. Where, hey, here's a React plugin and it's not you like configuring the loaders, but there's like middleware on top of the, that's instrumenting the tool. I think that really helped a lot in, in its popularity because config hell was real. And also it was just faster because unbundled, you know, skips doing a lot of the build up front and back in the JavaScript based tooling world, that was a big issue. Now I would say on the flip side though, it hasn't been all like sunshine and rainbows from, from like, um, and again, I, I just know from like the research that I do on these bundlers and from like what users tell me. So I'm mostly just kind of parroting like, the things that I've heard or think they might not be totally accurate or whatever, but, um, you know, like, I think a big one that we can probably all understand is like, okay, well, the development versus production discrepancy. And so, I mean, that's not a super bad problem. It's something you can work around, like either way, like it seems to have not impacted the community to a detrimental point. The problem is though, is I don't see a lot of people putting like half trillion dollar company and betting it on that consistency being good. And this is something that I would say, like Webpack has historically done well. It's had good artifact integrity. It bundles really small. It supports lots of things. It kind of meets you where you're at. And I think like when you're looking at the tools that you want, when you're on the lower end of like the problem sur surface, when you're in the, it, let's say like when you're in the 80-20 rule, in the 80, you have a lot of options, but in the 20, you don't have so many. Like example, okay, if you take Next.js, well, Next.js can't just use ES build or you just use V. Like, I mean, maybe if you rewrote it from scratch, you could get all the things in there, but they could do that easier with just like Turbo Pack or Webpack to kind of do the role. 
but these are also some of the more sophisticated like build needs out there where they're doing a lot more crazy stuff. So, you know, I think there's just kind of a difference between the target markets of what we're looking at. There's, uh, you know, like I would usually say that probably these are an acquired taste, but our target market is obviously everybody. We'd love for you to use the tools, but our, our focus primarily is like the focus we have here at home, which is, okay, you've got a $400 billion business and everybody uses these things and it needs to scale. And like your compute costs are like, you know, it's at the point where you're, you know, you're looking at engineering is cheaper than compute. So CI taking long and chewing up boxes, the amount of manpower to just write a new compiler is cheaper than living with the boxes taking 40 minutes. And if you can do that, plus artifact integrity, all the other things that you want, we're, we were just in a position of why not go and do it. So, you know, ultimately, I think the two will live side by side. What I think really needs to happen, though, is like with roll down. So that's kind of what I'm excited to see, like what's going to happen there is because I think a lot of the problems in Vite, it's also kind of unfair to say, oh, well, you know, I see some users use it as scapegoat. Oh, well, you know, it doesn't do this set or the other thing. And yeah, sure. But they like they have a thing that they're working on to bring out. It's just not out yet, which um, you know, again, we'll see what happens when it comes out. Um, but I think when, when we're in that space, what we've also noticed that was interesting is that V seems to be like looking at the bundled mode for apps. So instead of doing the bundle list and dev, like it's always done, they're looking at adopting some kind of like proprietary webpack esque chunking format and some kind of runtime for it. And I think that that's a really good move because at the end of the day, I think like the whole idea of unbundled ESM, I think everybody has tried it for a while and it, you know, it kind of works, but there's, there's like problems with it that aren't necessarily on paper problems, like, uh, doing everything unbundled. It's technically going to work really well on your machine in incognito mode, but go get the user machine with like the six Chrome extensions and the Bing search bar. Like you remember the old IE where you'd have like that many toolbars, like, you know, imagine a browser that's got like that, like your average Chrome, like laden extension laden browser. And then if you have to download like, you know, 4,000 little modules, it's not your network. Isn't the problem. It's all the junk that's sitting on the client device that you can't benchmark against that like brings it down in the real world. Um, so, you know, so I think it's, I think a lot of these things seem to be going in the right direction of, Hey, we tried various things. We think a bundled mode would be good. And the reason that we can do a lot of this stuff is like, we have faster tools so they can do more work. Like, cool. We can bundle it all really quickly and make it, you know, more or less as fast as like unbundled just because like rust would enable speed where, oh, if it takes like, you know, 300 milliseconds to start up, we don't really care at that point. Like it's beyond the point of caring. So I'm also excited for us to get that because it seems like everybody in the bundling space is kind of getting to the point where speed isn't going to be like this thing that, you know, the bundle of wars are fought over, which I feel for like the past two years, that's a lot of what it's been. Oh, well, you know, which one's faster or so on and so forth. But now it seems we're talking about like, oh, well, this one did it in one second and this one did it in 600 milliseconds. And it's like, okay, sure, that's still maybe, you know, two times faster or whatnot. But then when you look at the demo app and it's building like, you know, 15,000 modules or something, you're like, okay, well, realistically, yeah, so there could be a scaling issue. But if you can build, I don't know, like we have one here that's like, I think, 50,000 modules. It's like, okay, if I can build a product of 50,000 modules and I can build it in 20 seconds, then, you know, that's probably the slowest build RS Pack has on the market. And that seems more than acceptable to us coming from, you know, that taking like over an hour or more to build. So I think as well, just like the focus is going to start to shift as we all get the tools where it's fast and where it's like, okay, well, a little fit, like when you're doing HMR, if it takes a hundred milliseconds versus like 85 milliseconds, nobody cares at that point. It doesn't take 15 seconds to see the update. So I th I'm hoping that the speed war kind of changes, but then again, I don't know what the next thing will be that the bundlers are kind of, you know, vying for. Um, anyway, long-winded response, but that's just kind of how I see things. I think there's a place in the market for two, 
and or, or more and at the same time like now it's more become like well what ecosystem do you want to buy into like which one has the parts you want feet has a big community and big type of ecosystem and lots of people like using that but there's also people who you know enjoy the webpack type ecosystem but usually because it's like oh well they're very familiar with loaders or there's certain apis that let them do certain things that are just easier to get done in there or you know whatever other reason just that's their flavor of the month then it's kind of nice to say okay well this becomes more of a preference choice than not like a oh you know well like what's the real big difference here but i think what we'll just see is there's going to be just like you have react and you have angular and you have Vue. You're probably going to have like, cool, they're all going to more or less do the same job that 80% of the users would need. And then it's really just, well, what do you like using to do that job? Or what does it integrate with that you might also want?